Hey everyone, how's it going? And to Captain Calamity, in particular, a very fond bonjour. <laughs> Welcome back to Let's Play Okami. Bonjour. We have three more Satomi Doggo fighters to find and rescue out in the world before we can proceed with the second dungeon. Uh, thankfully, rescuing each of them is a little bit more in-depth than just, than just backtracking to the map markers. So first and foremost, we're going to go back and investigate the cutters and make sure that they aren't trying to stick one of the dogs in their soup cauldrons like Mrs. Cutter wanted to do with Amy. Oh, the Mermaid Spring. Proper noun Mermaid Spring has dried up. We'll be hearing more about those, uh, pretty soon. I think this mar this marker leads down there. Oh yeah, that's the house. The second floor always throws me. And luckily for us, it's already nighttime, which is great because the moon has to be out to do this part. So this just saves us the waiting. Nasty smelling pot. Mr. Cutter in Sinai asleep. I love his mustache. I love that it's just two razor blades. Uh, it's the same for her hairpin. Husband's con nice tasty beast for us. Oh no, but it's tweeting? Moon's very bright again tonight, isn't it? Moonlight can be a real nuisance for us, you know? It seems to give us strange powers. It makes us show our true colors. So it makes it hard to keep up, up a pretense of normal life. We get so hungry on nights like that, too. I love how creepy they are. Yeah, our hairpins are just two scissor blades. And there's something around that we have to examine. I mean, I know what to do, but for the sake of showing everything uh, thoroughly, I want to make sure that I examine the right thing. Oh, it's the platform over here. The color is faded. It's all rotted like it's been exposed to the elements. I wonder if there's a hole in the roof. There is indeed. It's dilapidated and decrepit. We saw that before when we, uh, when we strode up that plank leading up to the second floor roof. Whoop! I misjudged my depth there. Okay, so we're gonna bomb the planks and open a hole in the roof, letting more of the moonlight shine through. And then it's not quite catching either of them. But remember, we can always bite people and drag them around. And the silhouette. You saw me, you saw me! So the cutters are indeed monsters. In more than one sense. They were gonna eat the god of the sun. Oh, their designs are awesome! God, they're really cool. Uh, they are Crow Tengu. And just like the fish, uh, you just power slash them out of the sky and then wail on them. They're not that dangerous as far as enemies go. Uh, they will make like the imps and try to block you with their weapons, use power slash that as well. That should be a good opening. Nope. Needs two power slashes. And for their floral finish, we actually don't have the celestial brush technique that we need yet. So no demon fangs from them until later. So, who was the creature they captured? It was Chun, a bird, not a dog. I feel the need to clarify that, as uh, Judy Dench did. I'm 
think they're the right actor. Who cares? As she clarified at the end of Cats, that a cat is not a dog. I hope I've awakened the horny nightmare within all of you. Or reawakened it. Nobody can escape cats. So Chana is going to lead us back to her, uh, her town, which is Sasa Sanctuary. Which would otherwise be inaccessible to us until we've done this part. And you would think that this is going to be a really annoying escort mission, but no. Uh, she speeds up to match her pace, she leads the way, and there are no ambushes along the path. I mean, I suppose some of the demon scrolls could uh, float towards you if you don't have the, uh, the accessory that keeps them at bay. But no, you can just skirt around them and check this out. An illusory cliff, disguising the path to the sanctuary. And this is the Bamboo Village. Mr. Bamboo, yeah, I was just about to say, Mr. Bamboo mentioned this place and how he couldn't get in. It wasn't opened up to outsiders. And the reason it's not open up is because the boss's daughter, the boss of the Sparrow tribe, was missing. So we locked everything down. But now that she's back, the sanctuary opens back up for business. Pop, pop! So sorry, Pop, I won't go on my own again. He's, uh, a bit stoic. My doggy see me. So what's our reward? Eh, the gate's opening. That's one of our rewards. We'll double back for, uh, some of the extras after we continue on with the main part of the, the critical path. But none of this was done by accident, and this is not a side quest. This is indeed part of finding the Satoni, Can uh, the Satoni Canine Warriors. So both of these paths on the left and right are just dead ends with some wells in them. Where we actually want to go is inside the inn. And this area is not actually all that big. Yeah, we welcome humans and animals alike. Customers are customers. chaos here when she vanished. Thank goodness she's safe. It's a land of fantasy far from the human world, so they get few visitors. So the main attraction of the inn is its famous hot spring, located stage right. Did you suspect there was going to be a butt attached to that? Well, there is. Because it appears to be a dried out crater. Not much of a hot spring. I'm afraid the water's run out. Happened the other day, there was a sort of earthquake. I th thought I heard a monster roar. Wonder if it was the disturbance where everything went black. So she's praying for the water to return, but no such luck. And that's horrifying. Self-flagellation by way of burning her face with torches. Beating myself with my own fried drumsticks. <laughs> Somehow, they make the act of self-immolation 
into a punny scenario. It's so good. Speaking of which, I've been loving all the puns in the comments. <laughs> And Mr. Mambu showed up. Noting that we have uh, a small trouble. A small bother. That's going to turn into a rather big trouble if they keep burning themselves. Oh, by the way, uh, speaking of the comments, there was something really interesting pointed out by uh, Soy Alex Pop. And I didn't know this, but they mentioned that the canine warriors uh, being dogs was not the original plan. Uh, it's just something that the design team came up with on a whim because they couldn't really think of anything else to do with them. So we're going to play a digging minigame to get the water flowing again. And we're not going to need to hear that explanation again because there is a more in-depth tutorial coming up right before we do this minigame. Uh, so some of these blocks we can break with triangle and, and square. We're mostly going to be using uh, our Celestial Brush, though. Don't let him touch the spikes. He'll take damage and you'll lose time. And you have a time limit. Uh, you can bloom the buds to get extra time. We're not going to need that. This is really easy and generous. Uh, and different blocks require different brush techniques. When in doubt, though, the bomb is really useful. Like, these solid sandstone blocks uh, have to be bombed, can't be slashed. The ones that can be slashed are the ones like this, that have the line through them indicating where to draw. Oh no, we've run Abby. Yeah, that goes pretty quick. And you can see, even with him taking damage there, uh, that was only a five second penalty. And we have three minutes. We are not actually that pressed for time. Uh, the black stones can't be destroyed at all, so we have to find a way around and then under them. Oh, he's definitely gonna hit these spikes too. Unless... No, don't walk that way, you fool. Oh my god, you fool. Uh, I think this is the bottom layer. So, he's hit the spikes twice. We haven't really gone out of our way for too many of the buds. And we still have two minutes on the clock. Now all he has to do is fall his slow ass onto the floor and tell me to dig right here. Beautiful, steamy hot spring with the water flowing again. And now they could stop self immolating. Mr. Bamboo, turns out, was actually essential to getting us to where we are. Uh, but we're. This, you'll notice this still doesn't lead us to the dog that we're looking for. At least not directly. We've kind of done two roundabout things in the name of getting there, but still not there yet. But you'll see how the how the dots connect uh, pretty soon. So we've rescued Chun. Uh, we got her back here. We have restored the hot spring. And now we're going to get a new celestial brush technique and meet a new god. One of my favorites.
<laughs> this is Nuragami. Uh, Nuragami, by the way, has a daughter in Okamiden, the sequel, and she is also adorable. Instead of being in a jar like this or a flask, uh, she you find her in a pot of water. Moisten the thirsty earth. So the serpent's technique is, of course, water-based. And it works in a really similar way to the one that we got in the first dungeon. In that we are going to draw a line between the source of water and whatever we want to extinguish with it. Or whatever we want to uh, pour water into. Fried Sparrow for you. And there's another use for it. There are these power springs within the hot spring. Uh, and that you can find in lakes and all, and all sorts of bodies of water uh, around the world. When you draw a line straight up from them, it creates this big spout. And this is usually only good for reaching treasure in otherwise uh, inaccessible places. Like this one. Which is just another clover. And now with all that done, we're gonna get another lead from Mr. Bamboo. Needs to go to the hidden thicket deep within the sanctuary, but the gate is down. So, we have to get this large bamboo tube to sound. So we're gonna we're gonna do one plus one and use the technique that we just got. And open the gate that way. So onward to the bamboo thicket now. Just, just up the stairs, around the bend, there is yet another character who is in some kind of despair. Oops. I meant to listen. What's with all the chirping, kid? Don't call me kid. I have a name, you know. It's Ty. I'm not chirping. I'm crying. This is Crybaby Ty. Hake is lost. He disappeared while we were out for a walk. He is my dog. I lost my dog. Everybody loses their dog. And with that, the canine tracker has suddenly reappeared. So we're close now. Ooh, tigers. I'm gonna feed the tigers. Uh, after we're out of this cutscene. Bamboo's flashing. So we just have to cut uh, the right bamboo down. But first, feed my pretty. One day you will grow big and strong and take on a man named Kazuma Kiryu. And you will lose but it's gonna be pretty fucking hype. So that one, huh? Oh, I think the flash just disappears, but time has obviously stopped, so. Take, Take's back. What's wrong, boy? Why are you growling? Yeah, why do the dogs always want to fight me? White Wolf, what right do you have to bear the canine tracker? Shouldn't that be what right do I have to dog the canine tracker? 
Um, curious. Yeah, let's pick another fight. So this is fundamentally almost the same as uh, the previous dog fight. Except it's way easier to attack this one from the front. It's still more advantageous to counter uh, after he's done a combo, but hey. Oh, the Power Slash does nothing for you uh, until you have an opening. There, that'll be better. This one is very flippy. You love the way it moves around the arena, though. And eventually, if you hit it from behind enough, it's gonna get stunned. And you can lay into him a little bit more. Ah, I should have taken my chance to power slash him while he was stunned. That would have sped this up considerably. It's okay, we can stun him really quickly with beads. Oh, I thought that was going to be the stinger. Stun, thank you. Let's actually take this opportunity. Ah, I'm not going to get the second one. This is a casual 40 hit combo. <laughs> I love the rosaries. Looks like a ghost Izuna dropped him. Leave him alone. I won't allow you to bully Take like that. Keep it up and I'll clobber you. I mean, Take picked a fight with me. He can't return, though. This place is in grave danger. The monsters will overrun Sasa Sanctuary without him. But Princess Fusei also needs him. So, what is the compromise here? Well, Amaterasu takes on the Orb of Duty. One of the eight Satomi Power Orbs. Even separated the hearts of the Kanon Warriors beat this one. I love that. Power Orb has chosen you. Ah, let's feed the dog. Whoops, that's a bite. Cry baby Ty is gonna clobber us. No, no. And that'll about do it. Okay, more tigers. So let's head out of here. One down, two more to go. Now, before we wrap this episode up, uh, I think we have to talk to Mr. Bamboo one more time, and then we're also going to go upstairs of the inn and uh, see the boss for our rewards. Why'd you wash off all that grime? No, we like our stink. It's good for deterring predators. Ah, uh, now he talks about the Kamiki Festival on the night of the full moon. And the festival celebrates the 100th anniversary of Orochi's defeat. And we get a mermaid coin from it. Remember the mermaid springs from earlier? They are located all across Nippon. Pass between them by tossing in one of those coins. If true, you could travel across Nippon in the blink of an eye. And it's not really that valuable. You can buy them at stores. They become just common inventory from merchants now. Uh, and they are your token to fast travel. Really clever implementation.
now, let's see, anyone else? Nope. Just the elevator up. Like I said, there's not too much to Sasa Sanctuary. But this whole side qu uh, this whole uh, quest is pretty cool. We've been waiting for you. You did a great job finding Chun. We want to thank you. I told Pop about everything. Pop, Pop. He was very surprised. The boss is very impressed with you. So everything in this room in a treasure chest is yours. There's a lot of treasure in here and a couple of consumables. I think maybe even a bead? Exorcism slip. More vases. Bonjour, vase! <laughs> Some steel fist sake. Oh, bonjour is never gonna is never gonna stop being funny now. Not in this context, anyway. <laughs> oh, I forgot you can just power slash all these. Oh no, it's not my fault I can't draw a straight line? <laughs> Game? Don't punish me like that. A holy bone, and I believe that's a traveler's charm. Very good. Now, I think that's about it. So thank you all for watching, take it easy, have a good one, we're gonna rescue those other two dogs next time.